Hi, this is Robert and wanted to show you the next project I'm working on. And I've done a number of preamps, but this is my first uh, power amp build. I've done modifications to power amps. I've uh, totally recapped uh, uh, commercial power amps, but uh, this is my first time actually building a uh, amplifier kit from the ground up. And I wanted something that was hi-fi and preferably a uh, class A with hopefully an interesting sonic signature, something different than what I already have, just to see what is out there. And what I've gone with is Nelson Passes. Uh, can you read that? The first watt model F5 Turbo. This is the manual for the original F5, which uh, uh, Mr. Pass designed and built for his first Watt company, which uh, was a limited production model. Uh, it was a uh, push-pull Class A amplifier, uh, fully complementary input to output. And it was a 25-watt unit with very low distortion, as you can see, uh, 0 0.001. But it doesn't... While it uses negative feedback, it doesn't use an excessive amount. So there we go. There's the circuit for it. And if you look, you have uh, complementary MOSFETs on the input. This actually has a uh, current limiting, this version. These are current limit uh, transistors. The uh, Later versions, like the Turbo, do not have that. But then you have your uh, complementary MOSFET output. It's a very simple amplifier. The Turbo, check this out. <laughs> Look out, it's the F5 Turbo power amp. Is uh, There it is. The first thing you'll notice is he's removed the uh, protection, the current limiting circuitry and doubled the uh, number of output devices. Uh, this is the uh, Turbo V1. And uh, it's still using the uh, complementary, hopefully you can see the complementary JFED input. Uh, you have a uh, DC balance here, but uh, no, actually that, uh, you can actually adjust the uh, distortion on the unit. You have a pair of bias pots here. Uh, these are thermistors that are in the circuit which uh, perform temperature compensation so you don't uh, get thermal runaway. But anyway this is the uh, that's the V2 and what I'm actually doing is the it's like the V2 and a half so I have to look for that one. But anyway you can see it does uh, uh, the distortion is slightly higher. It's like 0 0.03. Okay. Yeah, this is the V2. That was the V1. I'm sorry. There are three versions on this uh, in this article. All these articles, I believe, will you can either find on the uh, Nelson Pass First Watt website or on his DIY audio website. But uh, Mr. Pass has an interesting trick on this. You can see we still have the four output uh, MOSFETs. But one thing he's done, uh, it's very interesting, is he's bypassed the emitter, uh, emitter resistors, the source resistors. Or they drain source resistors. Uh, up here at the power supply rails, they're bypassed with these uh, fast diodes. And if the uh, current draw is high enough to bias these on, they short out the emitter resistors and allow the amplifier to produce more power 
uh, without having to uh, increase the power supply rails. You notice the power supply rails are fairly low at plus and minus 32 volt. So this is the basic, and we still have our thermistors in the circuit. Uh, we have a lot of uh, feed, these all add up to be the feedback resistors going back into the uh, input here. You can see it just connects in like that, goes in on the uh, the uh, sources, drains. I always get confused with uh, FETs. But uh, one thing I will be doing is uh, in the version 3, which as you can see doubles the output devices, uh, he wanted to also make it uh, friendlier for higher voltages. And the uh, input uh, JFETs were running, excuse me, <coughs> were running kind of uh, at the ragged edge of their voltage capability uh, with the plus or minus 32 volt. And so his suggestion is to cascode the circuit. So you have these cascode transistors uh, which shield the JFET complementary input pair from the higher supply voltages. They make a more stable environment for them as well. So I'm going to use this front end with the version 2, wherever it went, uh, uh, output section. So uh, I've got most of my boards done. These are the input section boards. And you have your JFETs uh, here. I've got them, uh, I've got heat uh, sink compound uh, between them, and then I've tie wrapped them together for thermal stability. These are the uh, cascode transistors. This is your uh, uh, DC offset. I keep, uh, I think it's also used, uh, no, you zero out the distortion on that. You can set these pots, uh, that pot there, P3, to uh, essentially cancel out second harmonic distortion if you want, or dial in whatever amount of second harmonic distortion you want. Anyway, we've got uh, two huge 10 ohm resistors here on the base of the uh, JFET input pair. You've also got the uh, feedback resistors here. And uh, I've tried to squeeze in as many uh, Dale quarter watt resistors as I can. I left one as a Dale eighth watt because it uh, it's a low current portion here on the uh, on the uh, base of the pardon me the gate of the uh, MOSFET. So that's that. And then this is one of the this is a pair of the output boards. And they're going to go like uh, something like that with the input board in the middle mounted on the heat sinks of the amplifier. Uh, they're stuffed, but uh, I'm not ready to mount everything up yet. So that'll be the next step. These are the power supply boards. First we have the... Uh, yeah, these are high-speed MUR uh, diode rectifiers and rectifier diodes, and uh, they're mounted on their heat sinks. I actually, <coughs> excuse me, the normal, the normal uh, hookup is with a single. A pair of bridge rectifiers, one for each uh, supply phase. You notice uh, it's a dual supply, so you have a plus 32 volts, minus 32 volts. And uh, in this case, uh, because I want this amplifier to uh, 
be able to drive my magna planers, which are four ohms. I, I'm trying to set it up to where it'll uh, deal with high currents better. I'm hoping that uh, I can get away with the four output devices we have. That would give me a hundred watts into four ohms. Uh, hopefully with possibly the first 30, 40 watts in class A. But anyway, we're going to run dual mono. So I have the uh, dual power boards and the uh, bridges here. I have the, whoops, there. I have monstrous, uh, these are uh, 600 volt amp plus minus 24 volt uh, AC power transformers. There's a pair of those. So it's going to be dual mono back to the uh, input switch. And the case I'm using is this guy here. And it is huge. You can see I've got the uh, input outputs hooked up. This is the uh, switch assembly. There's the switch. Uh, you can mount boards to this bottom perforated uh, base plate. And then you have the heat sinks on either side. You can see I've already got the uh, standoffs mounted for the uh, circuit boards. This is the largest case that uh, is sold through DIYaudio.com, who provides the kit parts. They even sell the uh, matched uh, output devices for the kit. And uh, this is a, 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 it's a huge uh, chassis, mainly because the heat sinks are not that thick. So uh, in order to do well with class A, as you can see there, that's a little better if we look at it like that. For it to do well in Class A, they have to be pretty huge. And you can see they're about 10 inches high on this amplifier. This thing's going to weigh a ton, which is why I got the handles for the front. But anyway, uh, that's where we stand right now. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm fairly optimistic. I have a bunch of wire to wire it up with. This is my smaller gauge wire. I also have a larger gauge, which is, I'd say, equivalent to 16 gauge that I'll be mainly using. And that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, hope you have a uh, great day.